So guys, we are going to continue a discussion with respect to exploratory data analysis. Uh, we have already seen uh, before like uh, how we divided the numerical and categorical features. Now I'll deep dive and try to understand about these features. Similarly, I will try to understand about all the category features and many things as such. So let's go ahead. The first step that uh, I really want to check is that, you know, how many category, obviously we know how many category columns are there, but with respect to those specific categories, with respect to each and every columns, like let's say over here, car name is a category, brand is a category, model, seller type, fuel type, and transmission type is a category. What we are doing is that, uh, you know, we are just trying to find out how much percentage of the values are there with respect to each and every category in every categorical feature. So this is the proportion of count of data on category columns. Uh, now you may be asking Krish why we are doing this, uh, just to find out that what percentage of the values are basically present with respect to all the different, different features, right? So over here, you can see, I'm just going through each and every columns in the category features, and I'm just printing the value counts and I'm normalizing it, multiplying it by hundred. Okay. So this is what we are doing. So if we try to multiply with hundred, that is just going to give us with respect to that many number of that many number of percentage. So with respect to every categories, if you see that, if I probably try to go ahead and execute it, <coughs> like Hyundai i20 is somewhere around 5.87%. Maruti Swift Desire is somewhere on 5.7% because this is with respect to the car name brand, right? So here you can see name, car name uh, feature is there. And with respect to that, these are all the other, how many different kind of cars and with respect to all the percentage. Like let's say Force Gurkha is one of the car type uh, where it is just like somewhere around 0.006 percentage, okay, in the entire car name brand. Now similarly, with respect to the brand name, right? So like say second feature is nothing but brand. So Maruti has the highest percentage of the car, then Hyundai, then Honda, Mahindra, Toyota, you know, Ford, then Wolfs Volkswagen, then here you can see at the end, you will probably find out Force, which is having somewhere around 0.006%. Similarly, with respect to model name, i20 is the having the highest percentage of 5.87. Similarly, with respect to dealer, individual, you can see how the proportion is with respect to the seller type. And then you can also see that Petrol cars are more when compared to the diesel car. So over here you can see with respect to fuel type and similarly with respect to transmission type. And here you can also make an observation that maximum number of cars that are been probably in this particular data set is with respect to manual cars. Automatic cars are somewhere around 20%. Okay. So this is one of the thing with respect to just finding out like what is the count or what is the proportion of all the categories in the category column. Coming to the next one, which is called as univariate analysis. Now we're going to start with something called as univariate analysis. Now, what exactly is univariate analysis? Specifically, if I talk about numerical feature, if you really need to analyze that specific feature and not compare with any other feature as such, then we'll basically say it as univariate analysis. So here you can see the definition. The term univariate analysis referred to the analysis of one variable, uni right? It means one. The purpose of the univariate analysis is to understand the distribution of values for a single variable. So we will be taking up each and every feature and we'll try to understand how that particular feature is distributed. And with respect to that, we'll be able to understand that there are various different distributions. Some of the features may be following. It can be log normal distribution. It can be Pareto distribution. It might be following a power law. It can be normal distribution and many more things. So in order to do that, what I've actually done is that we are using plot.figure. I've taken a size of 15 comma 15 and I'm giving a subtitle which is called as univariate analysis of numerical feature with some font size and uh, font weight. And then with respect to every feature, I'm passing it in a for loop and I have actually created max of five rows and three columns. So here you can see all the diagrams that will be there. It will basically be in three columns and maximum number of rows with respect to different, different feature will be five. Here you can definitely play with this. Let's say if I just want three rows and three columns, I can also put that because most of my diagrams is getting fitted within this three rows. Then I am saying that, okay, uh, I also have to give the index number where the plot needs to be displayed. So that is the reason I'm putting i, i plus one. Okay. So that basically means when zero is there on the first plot, the first feature will basically get displayed and all. And over here, you can see that I'm using SNS.KDE plot. Okay. Kernel density estimator plot. Now, what exactly is this kernel density estimator plot? In short, with the help of this specific plot, we are able to create a PDF function. So PDF function is basically used for the distribution of any numerical feature. 
You can also use hist plot with KD is equal to true. But here, uh, since in Seaborn we already have a KD plot, why not use this? Over here, you just need to provide all your uh, numeric features that is basically coming. And here, some settings like which color you basically want, like red or blue or something, you can basically put it over here. It need not be put, if you are not able to put this particular feature, it is fine. Because at the end of the day, if I probably press shift tab, you'll be able to see all the features over here. Okay, so all the features will also be visible to you. You can play with any features that you specifically want for the styling purpose. And then you're giving your X label with the name of that particular feature. And finally, you do plot.title layout, wherein it will try to compare, precisely display all the plots. So I will just go ahead and execute this. And here you'll be able to see that you'll be able to get this amazing diagram. So here you have, so here you can see this density is probably following a normal distribution. And here it follows a log normal distribution here also similar kind of normal distribution here all most of them are right skewed data okay and this is also kind of right skewed data but we'll try to understand and one important thing is that after visualizing every plot the you really need to light a lot of observation now this specific observation will be super important because when you're working in a team you have to make sure that uh, all the plots diagrams that you're probably creating uh, you need to make the stakeholder understand right with the help of this particular visualization what outcome you are basically coming up with so because of that we have actually created some reports over here so here you can see that some of the features like kilometer driven max power selling price where is kilometer driven let's see kilometer driven max power max power and selling price so here you can see with respect to this particular diagrams here you have that uh, they are right skewed and positively skewed. Right skewed basically means positively skewed. That basically means in the tail end, you have very less number of variables. Whereas uh, in the left hand side, you have more number of variables. And similarly, the other features like outliers. So here you can basically see, let's see what are outliers uh, in kilometer driven. See over here, you have something like kilometer driven. Uh, you have engine selling price and max power. There are some good number of outliers so that that is what it is basically coming out of the specific report and if you don't believe me in this what you can do is that you can make one more plot okay and the plot is very simple i will just go ahead and write xnx dot box plot okay and inside this box plot what i will be doing i'll be putting up my let's say uh, I, I don't want to worry about the selling price because selling price is what i'm actually trying to calculate but if i probably go ahead and see with respect to uh, max power so i will just go ahead and write df of max underscore power okay so if i probably create this now here you can see definitely i have a lot of outliers so good number of outliers i specifically have with respect to this box plot okay so this is what uh, you can also see out of it right so there are definitely a lot of outliers on the max side with respect to max power so that is the reason we have written over here that max power kilometer in a driven engine right these all are having some kind of outliers okay so let me just make some more cells so that you will also be able to see that particular diagram also so i'll write a sns dot box plot <clears throat> and here i'm just going to write my df of um the feature that is engineering or kilometer driven okay so i'll just go ahead and write km underscore driven and let's okay there's a matter i'm not going to edit any of that so here also you can see the good number of outliers with respect to this particular box plot okay uh, we'll try to see in feature engineering uh, what all things we are going to do with respect to applying feature engineering and all. But right now we are just analyzing the data and always make sure that you have to write all these reports in a proper way with respect to every analysis that you basically do. Now uh, I go to the category features. Now here you can basically see that again what I am actually going to do with respect to all the category features where I have actually got as brand, seller type, fuel type and transmission time. Now think with respect to category features what kind of analysis that you can basically do. Only one kind of analysis uh, that is basically count plot. We want to see with respect to categories what is the count uh, in every categories as such. So here you can see over here I am writing for i in range of length of category 1 plot subplot two cross two uh, two rows and two columns plot is basically created and i'm just going to use this count plot function where i'm going to give my categories uh, inside it and then my x label x text and tight layout these are some of the features in matplotlib that you also know it okay 
so here once i execute it so here you can see brand is having so many different different categories maruti is the highest you can definitely see over here and uh, if i talk about seller type right seller type is also individual dealer is more when compared to individual and trust uh, trust mark dealer so along with that fuel type here you can see uh, petrol is the maximum one then diesel then cng then lpg and then here you can have the distribution with respect to manual and automatic this is basically the transmission type okay so this is the thing that you can basically find out and again uh, i'll keep a task for you write down the observation what observation you basically find out from this particular data set at least you should be tell that telling that what is the maximum number of brands that are available what, what type of seller types are there usually you know with respect to the maximum number of seller types uh, if i talk about the fuel type all this kind are very important observations and later on we can basically use this observation to do something meaningful okay now guys we are going to go ahead with multivariate analysis now see we have actually seen uh, univariate analysis we have seen both numerical features and category features using different different plots like box plot uh, by creating kde plots and along with that we have also seen with the help of count plots and we have compared the category features now we are going to do something called as multivariate analysis now multivariate analysis is the analysis of more than one variable let's say i want to basically compare the relationship between two variables i want to basically see how one variable is impacting the other variable we can basically do multivariate analysis okay so here you can see uh, check multi uh, multicollinearity in numerical variables this is one of the things see multicollinearity basically means that uh, the term multicollinearity will basically suggest us that or if i talk about correlations right just to start with correlation a simple definition of correlation is that it will try to find out the relationship between two numerical features okay let's say if i have two numerical features like age and weight okay so if i probably have a data set in that particular data set can we find out a relation that if the age is increasing weight is increasing if the age is decreasing weight is decreasing so through covariance correlation pearson correlation spearman rank correlation we can basically find out this particular relationship now if i talk about multicollinearity see in a data set you basically divide a data set into independent features and dependent features within the independent feature let's say if two numerical features are highly correlated it may be positively it may be negatively let's say they are features f1 and f2 and both the features are basically 90% 95% highly correlated so at that point of time it is not necessary to use both the features because both the features are almost similar right and what we can also do is then in feature engineering we'll see that you know based on this uh, multicollinearity we can also drop the feature but anyhow we'll just start with to find out the correlation between x and y and whenever i talk about correlation by default pearson rank correlation usually gets applied so what i'm actually going to do i'm taking up all the columns uh, from one column i don't want to use uh, uh, car car name itself but all the numerical features it will be able to find out the correlation so df dot columns with respect to one colon i'm just going to find out the correlation with each other so once i probably execute this here you will be able to see this kind of table now here is my vehicle age here is also my vehicle age so we are going to basically find out the correlation with every feature to the other feature every feature to its feature the correlation will always be one because we are just trying to find out the variation uh, variance with respect to the same feature so all the diagonal elements will have the same correlation like one because that feature is to the same feature we are trying to find out the correlation so it is always going to be one but with respect to vehicle age and kilometer driven it shows that it is positive 0.33 uh correlation like if you basically use pearson rank correlation your values ranges between minus 1 to plus 1 so this is basically saying that 33% it is positively correlated that basically means let's consider that one unit increase in vehicle age you know may increase 0.33 uh 0.33 uh, unit of kilometer driven something like that now if i talk about vehicle age and mileage it has to be negatively correlated because as the vehicle age increases the mileage may get reduced so that is the reason it is showing negative correlation so this is some of the important domain knowledge you'll be able to find out from this particular correlation right so if you similarly if i say vehicle age and max power you can see that it is very less correlated because anyhow let the vehicle age keep on increasing the max the power is always going to be the same right so there is hardly any correlation over here right and for this kind of uh, feature also we can actually observe a lot of things itself similarly vehicle age with respect to seats so definitely a simple common sense if i have uh, let's say if i have a vehicle and over there after 10 years also same number of seats is going to be there so there will be hardly any kind of correlation between them also but uh, if i probably see with respect to mileage and kilometer driven 
this has to be negative because see let's say my vehicle has probably run around 50000 kilometers initially it had just uh, run around 10000 kilometers at that time, point of time you know mileage was a little bit high but since the vehicle is getting older it is driven many kilometers so the mileage may decrease so that is the reason it is having a negative correlation but you can also see this mileage to max power right this is also having a negative correlation again from this you can understand some of the things again if you are a car lover you will definitely be able to get a good lot of idea with respect to this but one very important thing is with respect to selling price okay selling price is my dependent feature and i really need to predict what is the selling price based on all this input features with respect to selling price and vehicle age obviously there will be a negative correlation right because as the vehicle age keeps on increasing your selling price keeps on decreasing right this is super important similarly with respect to kilometer driven and selling price here also you can see that there is a kind of negative correlation but again a small amount but i think this should also had been a very good amount of negative correlation because let's say if your car has traveled 1 lakh kilometers right at that point of time even though you are doing proper servicing it it tends to decrease the price of the car similarly you can see selling price with respect to mileage and obviously if it is giving less mileage the selling price is going to decrease right selling price with respect to engine so this is basically a positive correlation so high powerful engine the more the selling price right if i consider two cars let's say toyota fortuner and innova toyota fortuner has an amazing engine right so it is always going to increase right the price max power again max power is also having a positive correlation seats it is having a slight positive correlation okay so this is what is the thing that you are able to do out of it if you really want to create a visualization diagram you can also use snh.heatmap considering df dot correlation with cmap is equal to and this is just a styling that we are basically using like a kind of colors and all and if you keep annotation is equal to true it is just going to display all the information inside that graph so once we go ahead and execute this line you will be able to see this kind of diagram right now whatever correlation we got right all the values these are similar over here but here we have assigned for every values different different colors so this is the range between minus 0.6 to 1 you'll be seeing that whatever are in the dark color right over here on the right hand side that is basically a negative correlation and the maximum value i think it can go ahead till minus 0.6 and with respect to the highest positive correlation it will obviously go till one and this is how the color is basically assigned the white color whitish color will basically have one and then probably if you are in this orange color it is going to be uh, 0.33 it is it is ranging between 0.2 to 0.4 you know so based on all this color you'll be able to see that how the variables are correlated with each other that is basically getting displayed so this is super important again uh, because just by seeing these values again you may not get an idea so we can also basically create a heat map on again get a good amount of idea about how we are basically doing the eda part right and specifically related to correlation now one task for you please go ahead and write down the observation at least i can give you one example that with respect to selling price and the max power it is basically having a highest correlation uh, so you can see somewhere around 0.75 and you can also go ahead and write down some negative correlation so just go ahead and write some of the observation of yours like how we have written on the top side right with respect to this particular report okay so go ahead and write it down uh, with respect to this particular observation anyhow uh, in your notebook it will get updated with respect to all the observation yes now uh, till here we have done almost uh, we have seen different different visualization diagrams now from the next uh, uh, session we are basically going to check about null values how to handle missing values and all but uh, we'll not do handling missing values right now in eda but we'll do it in feature engineering but there are still a lot of things that needs to be discussed and that will probably be discussed in the part three okay so yes i will see you all in the next video thank you